Leisure Travel Van RV. This is a twin bed model. And I really have enjoyed this over the last year plus that I've owned it. But like most RV owners, you always find something that you wish you had that uh, the RV didn't come with. While this has a rear view camera, that camera is only active when you're in reverse. And that works really great for backing up and giving you a good vision. But it's not on when you're driving forward. And with an RV this size, this is 25 feet, I can't really see all that well behind me. In fact, there's a lot of blind spots behind me. In this video, I'm going to talk about a rear view camera that is always on and it operates by displaying on a clip on LCD screen that goes over your rear view mirror. I will go over the particular camera that I bought uh, and the accessories that go with it. And then I will show you step by step how I installed the uh, system on my particular RV. And I will put links to everything that I bought, the uh, camera, accessories, and any equipment I needed for install at the bottom of the video to make it easier for you to find. If you look on the internet, you'll find there's lots of these um, mirror dash cams available. I bought a model from Wolfbox, which is their 12 inch mirror dash cam. This is model G840H. I paid $136 for it a few weeks ago. I noticed today the price is up to $160. They make a, a range of models uh, that are priced from $130 to $260. They have different accessories, different features, and so forth. So as I said before, I'll put links to that and you can take a look at those. And if you don't like this particular camera, you can still watch the rest of the video and get some tips on how to install whatever model that you buy. So this particular one from Wolfbox is a 12 inch touchscreen with an integrated front camera at 2.5K. The rear camera is uh, 1080p and that's a waterproof camera. So it's mounted on the outside and we'll show you how that's done. It also comes with GPS and uh, front and rear camera recording, simultaneous re recording of both the front and rear camera on a 32 gig TF card. You can uh, put a larger capacity card in there if you like. It comes with an 11 and a half foot car charger to provide power to the LCD display as well as the cameras. And it comes with a 20 foot four pin connector for the rear camera. Now this is a 25 foot RV. So I needed a cable bigger than that. And there is a model of this, a version of this that you can buy that comes with a 33 foot cable, a 50 foot cable. In my case, uh, mine came with 11 and a half foot cable and I purchased an additional 50 foot cable that uh, cost me 17 more dollars. Wolfbox also offers a number of uh, bundles with their cameras, including bundles with uh, longer cables, 33 foot, 50 foot, or you can buy those extension cables separately. So let's take a close look at what's included with this camera. So let's take a look at the components. I have them laid out here on the table. First is the 12 inch LCD display. It wraps around your mirror with these uh, clipping points and it uses these elastic bands to hold it in place. On the rear is the forward facing camera, which is tilt adjustable. And at the top is the input for the rear camera, input for power, input for GPS, and your um, micro SD card. And on the bottom, is an on off switch and this is the rear view camera that comes with this particular model as you can see it has no mechanism to tilt it it will sit flush wherever you mount it it's mounted with this 3m vhb tape so you don't have to drill any holes for that you do have to drill a hole for the feed, feed through cable and this works fine on my rv because if i put it flush on the roof it will point at the perfect angle now they do make another model of uh, dash cam where the, the rear camera has a tilt adjustment mechanism to it. And that's pretty common with a lot of these. So basically this feed through goes forward using this 20 foot cable. 
and as I said this cable is going to be too short for me and that's why I purchased a 50 foot cable which is exactly the same thing it has the same connectors the same wires everything the same so on this end it has the four pin connector that attaches to the camera on the other end it has the um, USB connection that attaches to the display and then you string the cable from the rear camera all the way forward to the LCD display now let me point out something about this this red wire here the red wire many people think you have to bring this red wire forward to a switching 12 volts and this is actually a very short uh, wire you don't actually need this red wire if you're using this basically as a rear live view camera the whole point of this red wire is if you put 12 volts on this wire on the display you'll get a backup grid so if you were going to use this as an actual backup camera and you wanted that grid you would need a switching 12 volts to be applied to this red wire when you go into reverse so usually you would hook this to your uh, reversing lights at the back of your car or truck or whatever that's why this cable is so short well in my case and in many cases uh, of people like watching this video we're not using this as a backup camera we're using this as a rear view camera continuous rear view and even if you use it as a backup camera you may not need that grid if you need the grid then you're going to pull bring this uh, 12 volts to some place on your rv where you have switching 12 volts in other words 12 volts when the ignition is on um, and when you go into reverse so i can show you on my particular rv where you would find that 12 volts but as i said i don't need this cable to go forward makes it much simpler i just need the black cable to go forward here is the power for this and this is the connector that plugs into the um, display and this is a cigarette lighter adapter which takes 12 volts and switches it to 5 volts so this display needs 5 volts not 12 volt to run and so initially when I install everything I'm going to use this um, in the beginning and this cable will dangle down from here to my cigarette port which is uh, has 12 volts only when the engine is on but ultimately I'm going to replace this with another accessory and that accessory enables you to bring the power from this port here down to a fuse box and at that fuse box you want to share the position which is an ignition switch 12 volt on when the engine is on so that will provide power to the whole system whenever you turn everything on and you won't have this ugly thing hanging down from your dash you will just have the other cable strung as neatly as you can down to wherever you have 12 volts you also have the gps module here which i assume you're going to mount this somewhere on your dash and it plugs in there and it has backside sticky tape comes with a nice manual and a cleaning cloth so that's basically it so how exactly am i going to mount everything and string the wires forward let's take a look so i'm going to mount the camera up on the top right above the center red light that light right up there in the middle and you can see below that the black object is the stock backup camera that comes with the rv and of course that's pointed pretty much straight down so this is roughly the spot that I decided that the camera works best. I found that out by um, powering the camera, doing a mock-up test and moving it around for various positions. And this seemed to be pretty ideal for getting the field of view behind the RV that I needed. So I'll clean the surface carefully uh, with alcohol so the VHB tape will hold the camera down well. And then I'll have to drill a small hole in the fiberglass back here just behind the camera so I can feed through the video cable and um, it'll drop all the way down to the bottom of the RV from inside 
the way this RV is constructed is there is a big space about a foot wide, roughly a foot wide, from the very back of the RV, the fiberglass on the back, and then the inner shell fiberglass to the cabin. So once I drill that hole at the top and drop the cable down through, it will come all the way out to the bottom. In fact, uh, those red lights at the top, the wires for those, um, in the center, on the side, those th are, are dangling down or fished down through the inside as well. And then once I get down to the bottom, I will have to find a way to carefully string the cables from underneath in the back uh, all the way forward. And I have a choice. I can go forward on the passenger side and come up into the passenger footwell or go on the driver's side and come out in the driver's side footwell. Uh, either way will work. For me, I think the passenger side is the route I'm gonna take. All right, so the first step in this installation process is to drill a hole through the fiberglass shroud so that I have an opening for the cable to fit down in there. Now I'm gonna drill a small pilot hole first and then use a bigger drill bit I think this is about a quarter of an inch. I want to use the smallest hole I can to make sure this fits down in there. And I've pre-positioned the camera to its approximate location using some masking tape. I'll use the 3M tape uh, once I'm done for a permanent uh, in installation. Now, obviously this cable is not long enough to go down in there. What I'm gonna to have to do is once I get the hole drilled, I'm gonna fish a different wire down in there, grab a hold of the video cable and pull it up through here, connect the two, and, uh, and then I'll recess this connection down inside and then we'll seal this up uh, later. So step one is the scariest part for me. This is the first hole I'm drilling in my RV, but it's the only hole I have to do. All right, now uh, drilling the hole went pretty easily. The pilot hole was the simplest. And then as I got bigger in bit size, I got a little bit of chipping. Now a quarter inch hole wasn't big enough for this, but then I also realized I really need this longer cable, this end of the cable, which connects to the camera. This is a bigger diameter. So I actually had to go to 3 eighths of an inch. So I'm gonna be pulling this up through the other side and that's going to be a little bit tricky so we'll see how well that goes yeah they're trying to fish it through this way i have this much bigger connector so i'm gonna have a fun time trying to get this to come through that hole it already kind of tough getting it in there so we'll see i may have to make it even larger than that but right now it's three eighths and we'll give it a try so in the end, even though this connector fit through the three quarter, uh, three eighths inch hole, I couldn't pull this through with this wire for, uh, fished through from above. So I had to go with a half inch hole. And I guess it really doesn't matter. A hole's a hole. If you don't seal it properly, you're gonna get water in there. Now, the other thing is I am two and a half inches from this seam. This is the seam where the fiberglass goes straight down. This is the main body of the RV and then this is the cowling in the back. So I think this is a pretty good position. You go too far this direction, your this part curves back in and you can't really see where you are. It would work, but you can't really see where you are. So anywhere, uh, don't wanna get too close to that. So I could just connect these here, seal this up and attach the camera and I'm good to go, but I don't want this wire flapping around all the way from here to the bottom uh, of the RV. So I'm going to attempt to do something to attach this to the fiberglass inside. That's going to be a little tricky. And so I'm going to have to let this go back in and get it prepared. And I'll show you how I do that. And we'll see if that works. Don't know if it'll work, but I'll give it a try. Okay. So now I have the hole at the top. I have a wire that I fished down through and connected to the video cable. And I could have just hooked it up like that. But like I said, I don't want it bouncing around in the back uh, area here. So I'm gonna try to 
attach it securely to some of the fiberglass wall inside. And before I do that, you might notice that, hey, how come my red cable is so long? That's because I spliced another 20 gauge wire to it just so that it would feed to the bottom of the cowling here, the underside, and then I could just leave it there in case somebody in the future really wanted those backup grids. Then they don't have to redo everything. They just need to hook to that wire. All right, so here's the plan. Uh, some of this I learned from someone online. So I'm gonna use these uh, hooks here with a um, cable tie. So I'll cable tie the wires to this, and then I'm gonna use liquid nails on the back side of this, because this I don't think this sticky stuff here is good enough. Put some liquid nail on this after I've attached the wires. I'm gonna use some Gorilla Tape on either side uh, to try and hold it into position while the liquid nail dries. And then how do I get it against the sidewall, against the fiberglass? Well, I got a fish a rod up in there. So it just so happens I have this shower curtain rod. The rod needs to be pretty long, but if it's too long, you can't fit it up there unless this thing's on a high lift and I'm not on a high lift. But with this curtain rod, I can fit it in and then I can uh, extend the curtain rod. So the idea is pull the cable up with these attached, um, use the rod to push the tape against the fiberglass wall on either side, a piece of tape on the top and on the bottom underneath that, and then push that pad with the liquid nails on it and hope it stays. And if it stays and dries without uh, messing around with the wires for a few hours, then this cable won't uh, flip around up there. All right, wouldn't be the end of the world if it does, but I'd rather it be more secure. So as it turns out, this trick of using these cable tie pads with some liquid nail attached to the back side, and of course cable tying the wires to this pad and using some Gorilla Tape to help hold it in place and my shower curtain rod, it actually worked like a charm. I was able to get this thing to attach at two points, one a little bit higher and one a little lower. So I don't think the cable's gonna rattle around in there. So I was very pleased with how that worked. So the next thing I wanna do before I finish the interior installation is finish this camera installation, the rear camera. So um, I'm gonna clean the entire surface very well with alcohol. I will attach this with a VHB tape right here and I will feed the connectors down through the hole I made over here and I'm going to use some uh, Gorilla Tape on this connector so that it doesn't wiggle loose somewhere in the future and then I'll feed most of this cable back down in there and once that's in there I will use some of this Dicor sealant to seal up that hole and actually when this thing dries, I'll put some Dicor sealant all around the perimeter here. And then once the Dicor on this hole um, dries, I'm gonna put a layer of a Turnabond over top of that so to further protect it and hold the wires down. So that's the plan. All right, so here's the finished product, the cameras mounted here with a 3M VHB tape. They put some Dicor around the edging to help keep the water out. I tacked down the wire with some Dicor and I filled the hole with Dicor. I could probably put a little more Dicor on top of that. Uh, there's a little dimple there. There's the Dicor. And I originally thought I would put some of this uh, Turnabond tape over that region right there, but I think I can just leave it like this. That's probably good enough for now. So I'm going to use this split black loom to um, encapsulate the video cable that comes from the rear all the way forward. That way the cable itself will be protected. And then I can cable tie the loom with the 
video cable inside to various points underneath the RV until I get all the way to the access point on the passenger side. So I did some fishing around to find a convenient access point and underneath these floorboards there is a opening that goes down underneath the RV and why I like this side of the RV two reasons one is the fuse box is underneath where the passengers feet would rest and I'll open that and show you in a minute the other is I can go up this uh, sidewall here um, on the interior and then go up and over to the um, rear view mirror and I think I can hide the wires best doing that so to take this apart you turn those screws 90 degrees and then this part of the footwell can be pried out there it is put that out of the way and then loosen these two screws and then this piece comes off and then this gets pulled out of the way so simply pull this up now with the, everything exposed I found that if you pry off this cap there's an opening from here from this particular hole here down to behind the uh, wheel well cover and so I can bring the cable up from there and the nice thing is that the fuse box is right underneath this tool kit so let's take the tool kit out and we can see the fuse box so I now have the fuse box exposed now before I get into anything about the fuse box remember that I am planning to initially use the cigarette power adapter to power the camera system so I don't need to connect anything to the fuse box I'm just going to bring the video cable through this hole and up this sidewall on the passenger side to give myself a cleaner installation with the video cable later I'm going to buy the accessory that replaces the cigarette plug adapter and that will power the camera system by tapping into 12 volts in the fuse box and that way I can run the power cable down from the mirror along the headliner and down this sidewall and down into this fuse box area and I think that'll be a much cleaner installation so now let's take a look at the fuse box a lot of fuses here but the fuse that you're interested in is number 24 so this blank spot here is 23 this one here with the seven and a half amp fuse is 24 there's some incorrect information on the internet that says you can use either spot 23 or 24 that's not true 23 is 12 volts all the time so if you tap into that spot your camera system will be powered 24 hours a day seven days a week until it runs down your battery what you want is position 24 with a 7.5 amp fuse that only has 12 volts when the ignition is on and in order to use that you would use one of these clever devices that goes into that fuse position so it has a spot for has an opening for two fuses so you take that 7.5 amp fuse out of there put it into one of these spots and then you put another fuse appropriate for the uh, current that's being used by your camera system into the other spot and so this comes with a bag full of 5 amp fuses I'll have to check if 5 amps is that sounds about reasonable it's probably a little higher than we need for the camera system so then this plugs in place of the 7.5 amp fuse the other two fuses are in there and then you have this crimp connector to connect to the power cable so I'm going to buy that accessory which then will convert this 12 volts because it has a buck converter it'll convert the 12 volts to the 5 volts that the camera system needs so it's really not that complicated it's actually more trouble running the wire underneath the RV than it is to connect power to the fuse box I want to point out one other thing that you put the 
fuse for the camera system in this slot position and the original 7.5 amp fuse in that position because uh, you, you don't want to put them backwards. Now if you'd rather come through the driver's side with your video cable, others have posted another convenient pass-through so you don't have to drill any holes. There's an existing pass-through that you can utilize down here on the left-hand side of the footwell. And there's a little flap here. If you lift this flap up, you can see that oblong black plastic plug. That plug can be easily removed and gives you access into the engine compartment. So you can bring the cable up through the engine compartment and then down through there. And if you want to go up the sidewall here, you can go up the sidewall here. And then some people do that because there is a fuse box over here, which is right here. This is another fuse box and you have access. There's also on this one slot 24 as well, which is this one right, right there. So in the end, I had eight feet of excess wire. So I coiled that up and stuck that back behind this well, plastic wall. And then I ran the cables or cable down along that edge and down in the corner down here. And then actually up through this molding. It, it went in there pretty easily. Just enough room for one and all the way up. And then up here is the, there is a screw here for this piece in front of the airbag. I don't want to mess around too much, but I loosened that so I could bring the wire through here, kind of tight, and then through the headliner. And then it tends to want to fall out of the headliner. I think I can stuff some foam or something in there. In the meantime, I put a little bit of uh, tape here, black tape, to use as a strain relief. And then it goes right to the mirror, uh, mirror camera. And uh, th that's the installation of the rear view camera. Now, for the moment, I'm going to use this cigarette plug adapter which goes down to the cigarette port here. And you see, I'm gonna have that cable dangling down. What I wanna do, and I mentioned this before, is get the 12 volt to five volt adapter with cable. And then I have to run that cable back the same way down through there and over to the fuse box and position number 24, that 7.5 amp fuse. So the only tricky part will be fitting a second wire in there in this thing. So we'll see how that goes. But for now, I'm going to try it out this way. And, and that way I can uh, make sure everything is working fine. So the last item I need to install is the GPS module. Now it's recommended that you put the GPS module somewhere where you can get uh, excellent view to the sky so it can pick up the GPS satellites. And one of the places they recommend is in the corner under the windshield. So I have it installed here on the right hand side, the passenger side, and then I have the wire going up the A-frame pillar. And then again, once again, across here, and then it comes down with the power, I mean the video cable and then it connects in to the top right in the middle. That was actually pretty easy to install. So I'm going to run it over here for a while before I actually uh, stick it down with the backside tape. Now that I have the camera installed and working, let's take a look at some of the basic features. So I have it set for the forward facing camera and I think gives pretty sharp, crisp image. One thing you'll notice in the upper right hand corner is a little dark spot and that's from this module on the sprinter that's in the way. So I have the camera shifted to the left on the rear view mirror. That's about as far as I can go forward, but it doesn't really impede the forward looking view 
as far as I'm concerned. And you can scroll to look further in the distance and you see as I do that scroll up I get more interference there I come but I'm looking at the sky at that point so that doesn't matter and if you want to look at the rear view camera you just swipe and it switches to the rear view camera and I took this RV on a six hour each way trip and was able to use this rear view camera and I was happy I had it you can see this you can also swipe up and down to see in the distance or to see up close now this red object is the red light on the top of the RV so you see that's looking straight down and I've pulled my car as if it were tailgating and you can go in the distance now the one thing I don't like so much about this it has a great wide field of view you can see uh, the lane behind you and on either side but its depth in that dimension going behind you is not that great in the field of view so you have a choice you can look close behind you a little further behind you or in the distance now I don't need the distance because the side view mirrors do that so I have it set so that it can pick up things that are pretty close behind me that can be objects that I won't be able to see in the side view mirrors I wish it had a better field of view in in that direction but that's what it has so that's what I'll deal with the other thing is when I mounted my camera on top the way I mounted it I had to go into the settings menu which was very easy and it's described in the manual quite well and rotate the image left to right and flip it upside down otherwise the image was going to be this car upside down and the right side on the left and the left side on the right but that was very easy to switch so the camera has a pretty high resolution you can read about all the specs on the camera online but it has pretty high resolution for the front camera and pretty decent resolution for the rear 2.5k on the front and 1080p for the rear it has uh, supposed to have very good night vision i haven't driven at night with this and haven't seen the night vision aspect of it it also has the um yeah, obviously it records and it records both channels on a continuous loop the front camera and the rear camera continuously and it has a shock sensor so that if you have a big a bump an accident it will stop recording and save or it'll save the image that you had for the last or the video for the last few moments you can also double click on the screen double tap and that will save the video as well so if you're in an accident and you want to show you were not at fault that's a nice feature to have the um, GPS is there and the GPS will display your information about your current speed and direction in the lower left corner and you can actually with one of their apps look at the route that you drove and that will be displayed in their app but you do that on your laptop so I think those are the basic features as I said you can go through the manual for all the settings and everything else it has worked quite well on that uh, total round trip of 12 hours I'm glad I had it I still have to replace this cable hanging down which is goes to the cigarette port which is switched 12 volts so it's only on when the ignition is on and that enables me to you know not run down the chassis battery when the ignition is off so all in all i think it's a pretty good camera and the installation wasn't all that difficult hopefully this helped you with figuring out what camera works for you as i said before i'll put links to the equipment i have here and the other options of cameras from this company wolfbox I still have to do the install and replace this with the uh, power supply that will go to the fuse box and it'll switch the 12 volts to 5 volts to operate the system and I'll run that along the headliner and down the A column as well down into the fuse box by the passenger foot and maybe I'll, I'll show a small video on that as well if you enjoyed this video and found it useful please like the video 
And as I'm just starting to make these videos, you might like to subscribe to my channel so you can see subsequent videos. So thank you for watching.